Good morning. I bet you know what today is. That's right, it's Sabbath. And I'm so glad we can watch Sabbath School together. We have a fun lesson that we're going to learn this morning. But before we do that, let's sing a song together, have prayer, and also learn our memory verse for the week. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that no one has gotten coronavirus and please help this virus stop and please help us to keep um by keeping our eyes on jesus we are saved amen <laughs> She doesn't. Okay. Well, that's going to change because we are going to do an activity that will help us learn a memory verse and it'll be fun. Okay? How many of you like to play catch? I bet most of you do. And I imagine that when you were learning how to play catch, somebody said this to you and they would have said, keep your eye on the ball. Have you ever heard of that? Do you know why they wanted you to keep your eye on the ball? So that when it was thrown to you, you'd be able to catch it because you were watching where the ball landed. Because if you didn't keep your eye on the ball and you turned away, you wouldn't know where it went. Our story today is about keeping our eye not on the ball, but keeping our eye on Jesus. So our story begins, it's late in the evening or later in the evening, Jesus had spent the day with his disciples preaching to many people. Finally, the people had gone home and Jesus was tired and he wanted some time alone to pray and to spend time with God. So he told his disciples to get in the boat and go across the Sea of Galilee. Well, the Sea of Galilee is a lake, essentially, and it's 12 miles long, 7 miles wide. And something about the Sea of Galilee is that it's below sea level and it's surrounded by numerous hills. And because of that location, the Sea of Galilee 
is often storms develop rather quickly and rapidly and maybe unexpectedly. And that's what happened on this evening. The disciples were rowing across the lake and then a storm developed. Well, that probably scared the disciples. And in fact, Jesus was still on the, sto the shore and he could see his disciples out on the water and he wanted to help them. Jesus didn't have a boat. The disciples had taken the boat, but Jesus wanted to go to his disciples and go see them and help them. So he did something that you and I aren't able to do. What he did is that he walked across the water towards their boat. The disciples were in the boat and in the distance they see a figure coming towards them. And not only were they afraid of the storm, but now they were fearful of what were they seeing. Jesus could tell that they were afraid. So his first words were, do not be afraid. It's me, it's Jesus. What a relief. However, Peter wasn't so sure. He said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you. Well, it was Jesus, so what did he do? He said, come, Peter, come. Well, now, Peter, what did he have to do? He had to go to Jesus, and he's thinking, wow, I bet he had stepped over that boat or put his leg over that boat, and he probably wondered what's going to happen. Have you ever put your leg over a boat or jumped into the water? Did you stay on top of the water? No. But Peter was looking at Jesus. He kept his eyes on Jesus, and he slowly got out of the boat, and then he started walking towards Jesus. And he was walking on top of the water just like Jesus. In his excitement, we think, we don't know why, but all of a sudden, Peter turned to look back at the boat. He looked back at his friends, and what happened? He immediately started to sink, but quickly Jesus grabbed him and lifted him up back on the water. And you know what Jesus said? Peter, why did you doubt me? Why, you, why didn't you have any faith that I could save you? And you know what? Just like the disciples were in the boat and they were afraid, we too sometimes get in situations where we're afraid. And what does Jesus tell us? He says, keep your eyes on me and I will save you. Jesus wants to save you and me, just like he helped Peter. It's important that we keep our eyes on Jesus. How do we do that? There's many ways that we can keep our eyes on Jesus, but let's go over some of them. One way that we can keep our eyes on Jesus is by being with people who teach us about Jesus, whether it's people in our family, whether it's our friends, teacher, going to church. That helps us keep our eyes on Jesus. Another way we can keep our eyes on Jesus is by reading the Bible and learning stories just like we learned today and remind us about the wonderful things of Jesus. And we can also keep our eyes on Jesus by praying. He wants us to talk to him. He wants us to ask him to help us keep our eyes on Jesus, on him. It's so very important. It's so important to remember the message today of our lesson. And it says, by keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are saved. We have an activity for you to do that will remind you to keep your eyes on Jesus. So in time with our lesson that we already heard, we're going to find something, right? A string or something. If you don't have a string, then we can improvise and just grab something long and make sure that you're able to wrap it around your arm or something. Okay, so have you ever heard of someone tying a string around their finger. Some people do that for them to help them to remember things so that they won't forget. So this string is going to help us to remember to always keep our eyes on Jesus and to always remember to tell somebody about what we learned today. So you can put it around your finger and find someone and then tell them about what you learned today in the lesson. So, when someone asks you about your string on your finger, you tell them it is to help you to remember um, to keep your eyes, their eyes, everyone's eyes on Jesus. Um, so, if you know the story about uh, Peter walking on the water, 
you know that Jesus called him to come to him and in order for him in order for Peter to walk on the water you have to he had to have faith in Jesus and to believe him that he was he would be able to do it so that's a story that we can tie in to always remember that um, to keep our eyes on Jesus all the time so let's just go back to our memories one more time and it says by keeping our eyes on Jesus we are saved teacher Mariah and I'm teacher Lex and we're going to be going over the Sabbath school lesson with you guys this morning so this lesson is about King David if you read in your lesson it's all about um, how he used his gifts and his talents with poetry and music to worship the Lord God actually called King David um, a man after his own heart and so we're going to talk a little bit with you guys today about what it means to praise Jesus and worship the Lord and how you can do that in your own lives. So the PowerPoint for today is we praise God for his gift of grace. And the power text is praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all of his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you, with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that you, your youth is renewed like the eagles. Psalm 103, verse 2 through 5. Hello, welcome to our Bible story time. My name is Priscilla Oben Akufi, and with me, uh, German. Hi. And Benjamin. Hi. Well, German is in fifth grade, and she has invited Benjamin and me to join her to discuss praise and worship. And so we are glad to join you to do that. So let's read our Bible. Um, it's found in Psalm 103, verse 2 to 5. It says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who
who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Okay. So, German, mm -hmm. I want to ask you this question. So, how do you praise and worship God? Or what is praise and worship to you? How, what do they mean to you? How do you understand it? Can you share with us? What sure. It means to you? I praise and worship God by thinking about who He is and what He has done and does for me. Thank you. That's good. Well, the next question I would like to ask is, you said you praise God by thinking of who he is and what he does or what he has done and continues to do for you. Okay. Now, the second question I would like to ask is that, what does thinking about who God is and what he does for you make you want to do for him? It makes me want to sing, read, pray and talk about him. Okay. Well, the next question I would like to ask again is, who is God to you? Because you said when you want to praise about, you want to praise God, you think of who he is. So I want to ask, who is God to you? He's my creator, my provider, and my savior. Great. That's nice. And what has he done for you? Or what does he do? Or what has he done and continues to do for you that makes you want to praise him? He created me. He gave me life. He gave me parents, friends. He gives me water, air, food, and shelter and he continues to protect me and love me. Okay, that sounds good. Benjamin, I would like to ask you this question. So, do you praise God? Do you have in your house, do you have family worship? And do you, during your worship, do you praise God? Yes, we do. Okay, so can you share with us some of the ways that you have your family worship and praise God? We pray, we sing, and we tell, we share testimonies of our life experiences. Okay. Now, I would like to ask you this question again, Jermaine. The book of Psalms, you know, is about David. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, do you have something you want to tell us or you want to share with us about what you know the Psalms to be or what you understand the book of Psalms I'd to be or what it means to you? I'd like to. Well, the book of Psalms is a collection of David's experiences with God. Good. So I like that part. It says it's a collection of David's experiences with God. Now, can you give me a, a specific example from the book of Psalms mm -hmm. that tells us or lets us know that David had an experience with God or that tells us about David's experience with God? Well, in Psalms 23, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. When he says that, he is saying that to him, God is his shepherd. And what do shepherds do? A shepherd is a person who takes care of his sheep and makes sure they get water, food, and they never get, and make sure that he counts his sheep. So a shepherd takes good care of his sheep. He <laughs> provides for them, he cares for them. So. It looks like for David, to him, if we had asked him the question I asked you at the beginning, that that the, the answer you gave to my question, that how do you praise God? And you answered by saying, you think of who God is. So if I were to ask David this question, perhaps David's experience with God as a shepherd would have been his answer, that he is a shepherd because David, 
saw God as somebody who provided, who protected him mm -hmm. all through his life. And so he shared that with us. What about the, the, the verse we just read from Psalms 103 verses 2 to 5? It says, praise the Lord. I will just say the first few verses. It says, praise the Lord and forget not his benefit. What do you want to say about that? What did David mean when he said David is telling us that to remember to praise God and not to forget all his benefits and and also not to remember and also to remember all of his goodness he has done to us. Okay. So it could happen that we may remember that we may forget so we may forget what God does for us because Sometimes we think it's normal. It's what we get every day in our life. We go to bed, we wake up, we eat, we have food, we have energy. Sometimes we may think it just happened. And so David thought we may forget that God gives us all these things. So he says we should not forget to praise him. Okay, so we can sing about his goodness that he provides for us. We can read about him. We can share it with others. As Benjamin said that he worships or his family worships. And one of the things they do is to share testimonies of the good things God does for them. So class, I hope you share with us that we all need to agree with David. Maybe David wrote psalms he i know he was a poet he could write poems also and he could put he had a way of putting his praises and uh, his experience and everything in a form of a psalm and he wrote a lot of them maybe i cannot do that you cannot do but we have different ways through which we can praise god so let's ask the lord to help us to learn to praise him. I know we've been doing it. And uh, it's my prayer that we can do it more and more and more. Amen. Amen. So have you guys ever read the book of Psalms? Well, David actually wrote the book of Psalms. And in this book, he writes a lot about God's wonderful forgiveness and grace. David was a man who made a lot of mistakes in his lifetime. However, every time he made a mistake, he always went to God in prayer and he was always genuinely sorrowful and always repented to God and asked God to come into his life and create in him a new heart and a clean heart so that he could be a changed person. Well, we're going to talk a little bit about that today and we're going to talk about how you guys can hopefully learn how to be repentful and worship God as well. So, I have a little scenario for you guys. I'm going to read it out the book. A friend of yours, Rachel, wants to worship God in all the things that she does. She has been looking for other ways to worship him than just going to church and reading her Bible. What ideas can you give her about worshiping God in all she does? Okay, so what do you think, Teacher Mariah? Well, if I was talking to my friend and she was wondering about ways to worship God, I would begin by asking her if perhaps she had friends who maybe wanted to worship with her. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Bible text that says where two or three are gathered, there Jesus is with them. And so if you guys ever have friends or like siblings or family members, it might be a great idea to join them and sing songs together. Or maybe you can just draw a picture or anything like that, any kind of activity that you think will praise God. Um, praising God can even just be sharing with other people what you guys did in that week. Um, if you had an opportunity to witness to someone, if you had an opportunity to be nice to someone, maybe if you had like a test at school or you got into a fight with a sibling, but God was able to help you resolve that, that could also be a really great example of worshiping God and giving all of the praise and the glory to God. 
Yeah, and this plays hand in hand with what we receive daily, all the blessings that we receive, our food, our water, our shelter, um, our health and our family and friends. That plays into the grace of God and it plays into the power t in the PowerPoint, which is we praise God for his gift of grace and we receive it in so many ways. So if you had a friend like Rachel, um, you could always tell her what Mariah said and you could... Um, pray with her and continue to just praise God in every little thing that you do and just teach her how if you know how to praise God and learn as well. So um, this also plays into the power text, which is praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. So if you ever want to remind Rachel, God also heals your diseases and heals your sicknesses. So and who redeems your life from pit and crowns you with love and compassion. God always loves us endlessly, unconditionally. So you should remind Rachel of that as well. Um, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And that was Psalm 103, verse 2 through 5. Um, so if you ever have a friend like Rachel's, just remind her of that power text. And just participate with her in things that you would think that would praise God and anything else we would like to contribute Raya. so as you guys go into your week I want you to make a list of every good thing that God does for you it can be little it can be small whatever you think is important or matters oh just make a list and Try to thank God um, for everything on that list and recognize that he deserves all of the power and all of the glory for every good thing that happens to us. Okay, so during this week, I want you guys to reach out to your family and friends and siblings and help them participate in this little activity Teacher Mariah just described. Um, I want you to help, I want you guys to recognize the blessings and gifts that God gives us because you know what, we praise God by recognizing those things. And if you remember the PowerPoint, we praise God for his gift of grace. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you. We praise you for loving us in spite of all of our, all of our failures and your faithfulness to forgive us. We ask for forgiveness whenever, we, whenever our actions and words do not reflect your character. Um, I wanna pray especially for the younger people Help us not to turn away from you despite all these distractions around us. Um, we also thank you, Lord, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, um, to die for our sins, an act of love us humans do not understand. Um, and we also look forward to your second coming so, you, so you'll be able to take us home away from this miserable, sinful planet. In your name I pray, amen. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. Okay, so we sang God is so good in English, now we are going to sing it in tree now tree is a Ghanaian language okay so let's go <laughs> 